Dr. Gilbert Ross. He's here from the American Council on Science and Health. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, folks at the FDA, for uh, having this public hearing on this most crucially important topic. Uh, the most reliable estimates uh, are that one billion people will die from cigarette smoking over the course of this century. It's cigarette smoking, that is, not tobacco use. Even in our country with its stringent regulations and long-standing absence of mass marketing, over 45 million Americans still smoke. Over 400,000, perhaps 450,000, die each year to the effects of cigarette smoke. This is a massive public health problem that we face. We have to address this today and moving forward in order to reduce the frightful toll of smoking. Creative approaches are needed, not blind adherence to the failed approaches of the past, fear and mistrust of the tobacco companies, which was well earned during the deceptive, manipulative, and fraudulent practices of the previous century, should not be allowed to trigger hyper-precautionary regulation uh, uh, on a far safer non-combustible products, whether tobacco-based or not. Such an approach will hamstring effective approaches uh, uh, to uh, reducing the toll of cigarette smoking. Uh, strict, uh, strict compliance, for example, with the recommendations of the most recent IOM report will eliminate any possibility of reduced risk tobacco or nicotine delivery products getting onto the market. We cannot await decades of data from gold standard random controlled trials that can never be done to pharmaceutical level standards. While waiting for such data to accumulate, millions will die. The deep-seated antipathy of governmental agencies, NGOs, and academics toward the tobacco industry is something we should never forget. But erecting impenetrable obstacles to truthful communication about the relative risks of different tobacco products and other modified risk products is counterproductive. Those who will be penalized are not the tobacco companies, but addicted smokers. The current regulatory environment as well as the stated goals of leadership of the tobacco industry, bear no relationship to those of the last century. I implore you not to ignore reliable epidemiological evidence of the low relative risks of non-combustible tobacco and nicotine delivery products. Sticking to the tired mantra, there is no safe tobacco product, is not informative nor helpful. While technically true, it is equally true that there is no safe automobile or medication but we allow them on the market and accept the downside for the greater good. Let me talk about the greater good for a moment. The sad state of affairs of millions of addicted smokers who want to quit and tried to quit and failed. Clear evidence collected over decades of use is those for which you to see it. Modern smokeless products such as SNUS, low in measurable carcinogens and low in clinical adverse outcomes are about two orders of magnitude safer than smoking. Not true, not safe, it's true, but safer. None of the official FDA sites, nor those of the CDC or other public health agencies, come to terms with these simple facts. Among the 45 million addicted adult smokers in our country, 70% say they want to quit, 40% try each year, but only 10% or less succeed. Current approved cessation aids fail 90% or more of the time, an unacceptable rate by any reasonable standard. Epidemiological studies over the past decade plus documented by EU health authorities show that the rate of smoking and smoking-related disease and death in Sweden among men is the lowest in the EU, directly correlated inversely, I should say, with the amount of smokeless tobacco use. Ignoring these facts restricts smokers seeking guidance to the same dogma. There is no safe tobacco product. Other official sites warn of the dangers, the ephemeral dangers, the hypothetical dangers of e-cigarettes. Smokers will just get the message. If these advisories don't help you to quit, just keep on smoking. The sad and inconvenient truth is that the approved products, I won't go through them all, succeed infrequently. Over a one-year period of time, less than 10%. And the article acknowledging this fact was published not by Big Tobacco, but by uh, anti-tobacco spokespeople well known to you, Drs. Greg Connolly, Hillel Alpert, and Lois Beener in January of this year. The abstract says, this study finds that persons who have quit smoking relapsed at equivalent rates, whether or not they used NRT to help them in their quit attempts, so why bother? And they have their own side effects, which are rarely mentioned. <laughs> 
The driver of ongoing smoking despite the well-known risk is nicotine addiction, which takes hold after only a brief experience with inhaling cigarette smoke. The addiction to nicotine, strongly enhanced by the rituals of smoking, keeps millions of smokers hooked. Smokers quit all the time, it's very true. More, there are more non-smokers, uh, ex-smokers than smokers now. And yet, it takes five, eight, ten attempts to quit, and over that period of time, deadly insidious damage is accumulating. And uh, lethal diseases such as cancer, especially cancer, develop years after quitting has occurred. Smoking-related COPD, which starts uh, during smoking years, continues to progress relentlessly even after quitting. Secondhand smoke sickens and kills how many? We don't know exactly. But none of those problems occur in, in the smokeless products or with e-cigarettes. So why bother with the facts about relative risks and chance confusing smokers with possibly reduced risk products? Here's why, because millions of nicotine addicts will keep on craving, seeking, and getting their drug. It is, it is not the nicotine that kills, although many consumers and even some physicians believe otherwise. Even if we could make all the cigarettes in the world disappear with a snap of the fingers, their replacements arrive very quickly. It's not that simple. Smokers, if smokers are discouraged from access to or information about alternative reduced risk products, some will quit. But said experience shows that the overwhelming majority will just keep on smoking. And the most lethal, dangerous nicotine delivery system is also the one that's readily available everywhere. Other governments and the World Health Organization are trying to address this devastating problem by banning smokeless products and e-cigarettes, conflating tobacco and smoking. I would urge you not to do the same thing. <clears throat> Let me uh, devote a few moments to e-cigarettes. Electronic cigarettes, of course, are not cigarettes. They're nicotine delivery devices. Uh, despite the lack of uh, uh, statistically significant information collected on them, millions of smokers have taken up this technology. Uh, that means the substances that are being provided in e-cigarettes, water, glycerin, uh, or propylene glycol, vaporized nicotine at various dosages are quite benign and at worst far less harmful than the products of uh, tobacco combustion. Common sense is not something that I as a public health person usually resort to. However, but the stakes here are higher than any, in any other situation, given that smoking is the most devastating public health problem we can deal with, and it is preventable. Decades of trial, we can't wait for decades of trial da data to accumulate and ignore the simple truth by ad adhering to warnings of illusory dangers during, while waiting that will cost millions of lives. Some have expressed concerns that reduced risk products will lead young people towards smoking, toward nicotine addiction and eventually smoking. There is no valid evidence that smokeless products or e-cigarettes function in such a gateway capacity. The issue I ask you now to confront is crucially important. The formidable barrier to truthful communication erected by the FDA and other agencies uh, about the, uh, the relative risks of various tobacco and nicotine delivery products. Uh, of course, when we attempt to uh, broach that problem, we run into the Family Smoking Prevention and Tobacco Control Act which erects barriers to a truthful communication, certainly by the tobacco companies. So who can tell the truth to the public, to the desperate smoker? I ask you to do so. I'm not asking you to, flo to flout the law, nor even to lobby for its revision. But nothing in the law or regulations requires your consumer-oriented websites to continue to promulgate false or misleading information about these products and their risks. FDA websites uniformly warn smokers away from much safer products and what seems to be an intentionally misleading campaign to keep smokers getting their nicotine from cigarettes, the most lethal develop, uh, delivery system. This is counterproductive and in fact dangerous. These advisories should be removed or better still modified to reflect the accumulating scientific reality, mostly from Scandinavia. These data clearly show the inverse correlation of smokeless tobacco consumption with cigarette-related mortality. Further, the warning labels on low-risk tobacco products should be amended to reflect the, the new scientific evidence. Uh, the inexcusable fraudulent behavior of the cigarette makers is on record. I became well-versed in it uh, in my tenure at the American Council on Science and Health, where anti-tobacco and anti-smoking efforts and mistrust of big tobacco was part of our marrow. We at the American Council recognize that times have changed thanks to the devoted efforts of many in the anti-tobacco, anti-smoking movement. Smoking rates have plummeted. 
although over the past few years it seems to have plateaued. Quit rates also, despite the addition of several newer cessation products, some of those methods, as I mentioned, have their own risks, and that's really downplayed on the FDA sites as well. In order to save the lives and health of millions of addicted smokers, the time for decades-old mistrust and recriminations has passed. The current leaders of the tobacco industry will continue to sell tobacco products, but they also state that their aim is to harm and kill fewer of their customers than they used to. The recent statistics showing reduced cigarette sales along with increased smokeless sales is exactly what we should be striving for. But even those data bring forth attacks from those who wish that tobacco would just disappear, but it won't. I believe that one day, I don't know when, that public health authorities who now misled and continue to mislead smokers by ignoring scientific evidence about the relative risks of various tobacco products will be held to account. Like the tobacco company executives who are now required to confess and accept responsibility for their uh, actions of the past, the current public health authorities may have to explain why they stubbornly adhere to a dogma based on belief or agenda, despite clear evidence to the contrary, maintaining with straight faces that there is no safe form of tobacco. Smokeless products are not a safe alternative to smoking. Such a position is not based on science, has caused and will cost many smokers their lives if nothing changes. Thank you very much. Uh, questions? No questions? Thank you again. Thank you very much.